Yeah, you know what's happening. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's working now. I'm so sorry, guys. First off, let me apologize to everybody. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry for the delay. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Sorry for the technical issues. I'm. <laughs> I did not see this coming. Um, okay. Um, hello, guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Bola Harrison. And as promised, I have invited my friend and someone who resides in the Czech Republic to answer some of our questions today on this um, live video. So um, in this video, we'll be talking about relocating to Czech Republic migrating to Czech Republic through the study route. Um, we'll be also talking about benefit of living in Czech Republic, life as an international student in Czech Republic, jobs, and all of the questions you asked me. So this is Obina. I'm going to allow him to introduce himself. And um, before I go into the many, many questions that I want to ask him. So you have the floor. All right. Uh, thank you, Bola, for bringing me onto your channel. My You're name is Obina, thank you. like uh, you said, and um, I'm a PhD student here in Czech Republic um, at the University of Pardopizza. Uh, some people pronounce it Pardopizza, but okay. uh, locals pronounce it Pardopizza. Uh, yeah. okay. and, um, I'm in the Faculty of Chemical Technology, right in the Department of Chemical Engineering. and um, yeah, this is my second year in Czech Republic, and it has been awesome. Okay, so you've been in Czech Republic, you've been in Czech Republic for about going to two years now. Yeah, a year and some more. Okay, um, I myself have not lived in Czech Republic for a long time, as you know, and so a lot of people have questions like, "Was it like living in Pardubice?" I think a subscriber asked specifically. Was it living like in Padubice and was it like studying in Padubice or Padubisa? Like you said, I keep saying, I keep pronouncing the C and E. So, was it like living there? And I just wanted to share how you, number one, how you migrated in brief and how you were able to get, you are a PhD student, so how you were able to get a supervisor or if you did have to, how you just you know, got your study in Czech Republic, how you landed in Czech Republic, so to say, <laughs> before I start. Okay, um, so for brief, I'm going to take it, it's a really long process, okay. right? So I'll, I'll shorten it and then make it very simple so that your viewers will understand this pretty okay. easy. Okay, so first thing is you need to apply. At the University yes. of the Pizza, I would say, uh, for certain departments, <clears throat> All you need to do is to write to the study guarantor, okay. right? And once okay. the study guarantor um, receives your application, the study guarantor is going to link you up with supervisor. So you don't have the stress of writing to supervisors directly. So you write to the study guarantor, and the study guarantor understands that some department needs a PhD student, and then they can link you up. So once that is done, they will give you your topic and then the supervisor. So on the link, when you are applying, you're supposed to put the name of the supervisor and then the topic while you're applying on the school um, portal for application. All right, so once okay. you do that, and um, the next step should be like an interview, you'll be called on the Zoom's meeting, or Teams, or Skype. That depends on the agreement between you and the department. And then after the interview, once you're successful, then they send you your your the decision of the of the interview or the examination, so they call it. And so once they send the the the, the results, it's going to come with your um, admission um, later. Okay. And then probably if you have a, a scholarship fully funded, it's going to come stating the exact amount you're going to be paid. And um, then I think these are the two major things you have to send. Then every other thing will have to be you. So you have to write to the accommodation center for approval of accommodation. 
and then you gather every other document that is required. Then you go straight to the embassy and apply, go for the interview, and once your visa is granted, then you find yourself here in Czech Republic. So if you come to Padovica, um, Padovica is a small city. Okay. Yeah, really small. It's, it's kind of small. Best. I advise people to get admissions in bigger cities like Brno, um, Ostrava, um, Prague. Uh, <laughs> bigger places where you can easily get a job, right? But yeah. Thing, life is a little bit um, cost of living is expensive. Okay, not to cut you off, but uh, because we have students who are MSc students or MA students, that's people at the master's level, bachelor's level, and PhD level. Um, for master's level, I'm just going to say that you have to go through the usual procedure of finding your course and applying to your faculty. And for bachelor's, the same thing. But in your case, you mentioned that for PhD, you do not actually have to find a supervisor, right? Yeah, for my school, you don't have to find a supervisor. You write to the study guarantor, and then the study guarantor matches you with um, a supervisor. Someone in the field. Yeah, why it's like that? Because here there are already topics, existing topics. Okay. Right? So you're not coming to write your own topic. You're not coming to write a proposal. They already have existing topics. You understand? So, But this is specifically for schools that have funding. So if there's a research you're coming in to do, okay. and there's funding for you, that simply means there's a topic you're coming to offer. So what they yeah. look for when you apply is they look at your CV and what you've done, to see if what you've done match what they want. Okay. You understand? So th this is it for schools that come with funding. There's a topic for you to just join the research team and then you do your research with them. So in your case, your program is funded? Yes, mine is funded. Okay. Um you did not have to find a supervisor so that's clarified if you're a master's student and you're looking at studying in czech republic you have to go through the list of schools pick a course and apply to the appropriate department and um, for, in my own case when i applied to the university of Padovisa, i had to find a supervisor <laughs> even though the the program had a funding because it was a new uh, center at the university faculty of philosophy or department of philosophy i had to find a supervisor i had to reach an agreement with a supervisor and then I had to apply. So I paid the application fee, I went through that process. And then, so I, I think it varies according to department. So my next question is this, what is it like living in Padubise and Czech Republic generally? Um, because we have a lot of people coming in, I myself just got in and if you can't really find a lot of information about it. We know it's cost of living is not that expensive, but from someone living there for a longer period of time, what's your experience like? Well, th this question is relative because um, the cost of living in Pardo Pizza is quite different from other places, right? Mm -hmm. Cost of living here is quite cheaper, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's really quite cheaper here compared to Prague and um, other bigger cities, you know. So that's one. But number two, um, should I say, life generally is calm in Czech Republic. The people are welcoming. Um, the weather is a little bit harsh during winter. And it's, the, cool. it's really yeah, cool. It's really harsh during winter. And then during summer, it can get up to 28 degrees, which is really warm for them. Um, then food, they have their own native foods, which are mostly dumplings, um, goulash. Most of their foods are around potatoes, I discovered. And um, the foods are nice. Um, the environment is cool, calm, security is top-notch. I mean, if you yeah, check, no. you discover that uh, really this index of Czech Republic is about 1.3. And is relatively peaceful. Uh, crime rate is absolutely low, and um, in general, Czech Republic it's beautiful. I would say. Okay. Uh, so when you first landed in Czech Republic, what did you have to do as an international student when you got there um, to your university? What did you have to do to settle in, moving down there, resuming classes, and all of that? Okay. So when I came in, 
I visited the department, the study department, and then the first thing they asked me to do was, okay, they gave me a form. I, I had to register, pay the school fee. Yeah, because we, I have um, a school fee of about 400 euros I pay every year. Oh, I didn't even ask how much your tuition fee is. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So my tuition fee is 400 euros every year. Uh, which 400 I, euro. 400 euros. Nice. Uh, my tuition fee is 400 euros because I'm studying English. But if yeah, I'm that's not, good. Yeah, if I'm not studying English, then it's absolutely free. Yes. So, but the truth of the matter is, um, my, what do you call that? My, wait a minute, did I say 400 euros? Yeah, you said 400 euros. Okay, yeah, yeah that's correct, that's correct. So, I'm paying 400 euros because I'm studying English. Okay. But my, my scholarship covers it. Okay. Yeah, my scholarship actually covered it. So, that's not really much of a problem. So it's because I'm actually studying in Czech Republic and in English. That's why my school, my tuition fee is that amount. So I have to pay that every year. So when I came in, I paid the amount. After paying the amount, I got registered. So then I was asked to go and create um, bank accounts and get a phone number to complete the registration. Because actually, so it's actually into that bank account I'll be paid. So it has to be a Czech account number. Yeah. So, so when I got the phone number, the check phone number and then the check bank account number. So I got fully registered. I was given a student card. And the student card is like an access, an access to every place around the faculty. So if you don't have that card, it becomes difficult for you to access certain places. So I think that's the basic thing I did. Then moved up to the department, met with my supervisor who introduced okay. me department and then introduced me to my lab and then I got my cabin where I do my little studies which is fully equipped there's a laptop I mean there's there's a computer in there there's a printer and I have the papers and I have a mini library in the department and and I got started so how how much do you pay for your accommodation per month what's your cost of accommodation Okay, accommodation, it's like 3,000 check crowns. 3,000 check crowns. That's about 80 euro. Mm, yeah. That's, yeah that's give or take is about 80 euro per, per month. Per month. Wow. That's, that's really low. 3,000 check crowns. In Naira, that should be... Because in Naira, we don't buy... We, don't, we can't buy it from the bank. People buy euro... And then convert to check crown. So black market rates in Naira, that should that is about one hundred and five to one hundred and ten thousand naira. Yeah, if you're looking at it at um, thirty five naira per crown. Thirty five naira. Yeah, I'm looking at it with thirty five naira per check crowns. Yeah, then you should be correct. Okay, so you pay three thousand check crowns per month for your accommodation. Your tuition fee is four hundred euro because you're studying in English. Yeah. However, you also have a funded, um, you have a scholarship that covers your cost of tuition and your accommodation. Okay, so um, I think my next question will be for which the subscriber asked, um, what it's like getting a job for international students in Czech Republic, bearing in mind that the official language is not English. Uh, yeah, I, I, I expected that. Uh, it's a big challenge for people in the smaller cities. So if you're in, if you're in part of the pizza, getting a job here might be difficult because um, Czech is not an English speaking country. Yeah. So, and owing to the fact that part of pizza is a small city, so you won't have a lot of people speaking English. So what most of us do is you have to go to Prague or Brno or Olomo, and then you, that's where we work. And it can be stressful sometimes. So that's why I advise people why don't you get uh, admission in such cities? The bigger cities. Yeah, so it becomes easier for you to get a job. A friend of mine got to Czech Republic, um, yeah, early this month. I think that's yeah. like on the 6th of this month. And um, he just got a job today. So your friend who just got in on the 6th of February got a job today. Yep. Where is the school in? In Prague. Yeah, in Prague, CTU Prague. So you're advising that if at all you have to come to Czech Republic, 
you have to get accommodation, your school, everything in the bigger cities like Bruno, Prague. Yeah, because Prague. because accommodation is even cheaper if you stay in school, um, school dorm. dormitories, right? It's quite easier. But if you're getting accommodation outside the school dormitory, accommodation can be quite expensive. I mean, something above 10,000 Czech crowns, which is yeah. 400 euros. Meanwhile, the cost of living in Czech Republic on an average is like 500 to 600 euros. So which means you'll be spending more for accommodation if yeah. you are staying outside the school dormitory. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, if your friend who just arrived Czech Republic is already working in Prague, it means that, because let me say it this way, there are students in Prague, in Prague who have not even gotten a job right now, and there are students in Prague who are working. Now, uh, I, Prague is a bit very competitive. I think that's why sometimes I don't really advise people to cast all their hopes and aspiration in studying in Prague, even though it's a bit for you to work. Because um, if you look at the current situation of getting your appointment, Prague is overpopulated by African students and even Indian and Pakistani students. Um, there are a lot of people who want to go to CZU, that's the Czech University of Life Science, because it's really 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 affordable but the chances of getting your appointment and and getting your visa and going to Prague is kind of like competitive more like in cities like Padubisa, Aradred and the rest of them so uh, but, but even at that there are other bigger cities oh, welcome to you know. it's a really really exciting day and so sorry yeah there are other bigger cities like Bruno which is quite uh -huh. bigger than Prague, and there are a lot of jobs there. So you mustn't go to Prague, but just look at other bigger cities. You know, there's Ostrava. You can actually go there rather than just going to Prague. I mean, like, everybody wants to go to Prague. It's the capital city because the moment you land in Czech Republic, you land in Prague. So yeah. Czech, uh, this is where most people want to settle. So it's with time you begin to understand that there are other minor cities you can actually visit. You know, so... You should just have to make a good research, look at all the schools available for you, and then find which one suits you more. But most importantly, get here first of all, then you can migrate. So, um, in my own case, in my own case, I think that, or from experience, I think that people pick the smaller cities because uh, it's less populated. One, two, um, tuition is low. For instance, in Aradred, you don't have to pay application fee before you apply, which, as you know, now in Nigeria, it's becoming a problem to pay for things like that. Number two, you don't have to pay tuition fee before you leave. Um, number three, you can get funding. So those are the things that students kind of like look, look at before moving. So uh, is it possible that someone schooling in Padubisa can live in Prague and school in Padubisa? Do you think that is feasible? Um, well, it depends on where in Prague. Uh, we have like different Prague's, Prague 1, 2, 3, two, I think up to Prague 10. So where exactly are you living in Prague? You know, because from, um, from the train central station in Prague to Padopisa train station, that's about an hour, 15 minutes maximum, right? So. One hour, 15 minutes to get to Prague. Yes. From from um, the train station in Padupis to the train station in Prague. That's an hour, 15 minutes. So now it depends on where are you going to in Prague. Where do you stay in Prague? Oh Imagine God, you are living freaking. in Prague then and you are coming to Padupis. That should take you almost two hours. So you, have, you need to know where you are staying. Apart from that, it's going to be a little bit difficult for you. So I wouldn't say completely, yes, it's okay. If you're close to the train station, then it's fine. It's just an hour, you take your train, and then you plan yourself. But if you're living farther than that place, then I don't, I don't advise that. So you wouldn't advise someone living far away from the train station or from certain places in Prague to school in Padovisa yeah, at least, at least and live in a maximum of five kilometers away. Once it's beyond five kilometers away, it's going to be quite difficult for that person. One is this trains are all scheduled. 
So if you miss one train, you know what that means. You have to wait quite a long yeah. time for you to get another train. So you have to just have to plan yourself. Apart from that, then you might be miserable. So but for those of them coming for master's program, master's program are a structured program, quite organized. So definitely you should know these days I have classes, classes. and these days I'm free. So you're able to plan yourself. So it's unlike the PhD students that have an unstructured program. So you determine how your program is going to work. You might decide I'm going to come Monday to Wednesday or Thursday and I have the rest of the week for myself. You know, so your program determines the kind of plan you're going to make for yourself. Okay, so, um, okay, that, that aside, um, I think another question I also want to ask is, you've lived in Czech Republic for more than a year, which means um, you went through the health insurance and getting your, your card. And um, so I would like to ask how you were able to renew, because one thing that is not clear to us coming in newly, or to us who are in Nigeria or outside Czech Republic is, um, usually the idea was that when you pay for your health insurance from your own country, maybe you pay for two years, you get given it, you get a two years visa, but it's not like that. We discover that once you once you get the visa approved, the the embassy tells you how long you pay for, which usually coincides with the end of your academic year. So it's one year. Maximum is one year visa you're given. So when you come in, do you have to go through that process again to get your maybe the second permit or to get your visa or what do you do? Okay, so the way the system is designed is this it's designed in a way that uh, you have to renew your residence every year. So I think for them, it's a way for them to be able to check people. You okay. understand? So to be, for, for them to be able to check people and to checkmate the activities of people. So to be sure that you have a valid reason for staying in the territory of Czech Republic, right? So, okay. Now, when you're coming, you have like, let me give you an instance. You have like a one year um, and you're coming yeah. for a two year program, right? So at the end of the one year, you have um, maybe maximum of three months till the end of your visa, at most two days or three days to the end of your visa for you to apply for a renewal. So when okay. you apply for a renewal, most of the things you need is one, is a health insurance. And this is the only thing I find difficult here because the health insurance is quite expensive. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's really, really expensive, you know. So you need your um, health insurance if you are above 30. You're above 30. If you're above, yeah, if you're above 30, you should be paying almost 25,000 check rounds. Then if you're below wow, that's a lot of money. That's some some people's tuition fee. Then if you are if you are below twenty six years, you should be paying like seventeen thousand check rounds. Then if okay. you are between twenty six and thirty, you should be paying somewhere around eighteen, nineteen, twenty thousand. But that yeah. depends on your age, right? That depends also on your age. So so you need to renew your health insurance. But if your health insurance is running, all you need to do is come with it. That's one. Number two. Um, you have to pay the two thousand five hundred check rounds, which is the, the 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 application fee for the residents. So, but yeah. this round you're not giving them the cash, so you bring it in form of um poster, poster stamps. So you have the to buy two thousand five hundred check rounds. Yes, you have to buy a poster stamp worth two thousand five hundred check rounds. Okay. You come with that, then you need your proof of stay. So, which means. If you are staying in Czech Republic, why are you here? What I mean, so you need to show a proof. Where so you that, are living. So that means you need to go back to your school and ask them for um, um, a proof of stay. The accommodation contract. Oh, no, not the accommodation contract. Not the accommodation contract. I'm talking about why you are staying in Czech Republic. So okay. if you're working, you need something from an, your, your employment contract. If you're a student, then you need to get a form that shows you've registered for the next academic session. So the school has to provide you with that. Then that's proof of stay. Then you cannot have proof of accommodation. So wherever you are staying, if you're staying in the dormitory, you meet them, they are going to prepare it for you. But if you're not staying in the dormitory, then you have to meet the um, whoever owns the building where you're staying 
And Your landlord. Uh, yeah, he's going to bring get that proof for you, and um, then your passport. I think this, this is the basic thing. So you take it to the immigration office, and then okay. so when they receive your application, then they are going to book you. They, they they need to approve it first of all because they need to confirm the things you've sent. So it might take up to two weeks for them to confirm it. So you have to check on the on the website of the of the immigrations for you to confirm that they've approved it. So once it's approved you should return to the immigration office to now book for biometric capturing. So they now tell you when you come for biometric capturing. Okay, so uh, um, okay. I know you're a PhD student. I know you're a PhD student, so you have funding, which is different. So, but for master's students who come in- Oh, I missed that part. For master's yeah. students, you need to bring a proof of fund. Again? So, yes, again. So probably from your parents or okay. yourself, whatever, but all they want is they want to see proof that you have this amount of money that will take you for one year. So I think right now it should be like a hundred, I think it's 150,000 check rounds. 115,810 check rounds. That's yeah. how much you have to show right now. So, so which means it has increased. The time yeah, I paid, it was 110,000 last year. Oh, it was one hundred ten thousand thirty check rounds, or there about fifty check rounds. Yeah, oh, I think so. So when I came, it was ninety three thousand check rounds. Mm -hmm. So, but right now it has increased to one hundred and fifteen. So you need to show proof of so, which means, in summary, you need to have um, health insurance. Okay. Proof of accommodation. Okay. Proof of stay and proof of funds or proof of finance so these are four basic proofs you need to have outside that your passport should come alongside and then the cost of um, application which should come in the form of poster what's 2500 check rounds so, so are you saying now every year that you stay in czech republic if your program is a three-year program when you leave your own country and come into Czech Republic to renew, this time around, not to get a visa, to get your residence card, you also have to show your proof of fund again. Yep. Each time and you then, have to show your proof of fund. But here, here's the trick. Um, I'm going to say this, but it doesn't apply to everybody. Okay. All right. So this is my advice to people, but they just have to do it um, codedly. That's the word, right? So what you yeah. need to do is some people, once you get here, especially those who are IT inclined, you have IT skills. So once you come in, you get a job. And if you get a job, maybe it's a full-time job, you know how to juggle it between your studies. Okay. You automatically change your, your, your visa from student to employment. To the employer car, empl employee yeah. car. So once you're able to do that, what it means is that your employers will not have to pay for your, um, for your, for your insurance. It's a law that if I'm working for you, you pay for you my pay insurance. For my insurance. Exactly. So that covers it. Then this time around, so if you have to renew your residence, that means you don't need proof of form. All you need is just what your employment yeah, contract that shows how much you've been paid. Wow. So that's the first way of doing that. So if you're able to get yourself a job that the pay is enough, maybe within uh, 30,000 to 40,000 check rounds, it's enough. Okay, I also learned that when I was, when I was, when I came around also, um, I also learned that students in Prague can work full-time, codedly, like you said, uh, because I discovered a lot of students work regular office jobs, like, is it blue-collar jobs or white-collar jobs? Which, which one is it? Anyone you call it. <laughs> so, a lot of students, some students work full time in Czech Republic. I discovered that, uh, especially those in the bigger cities like Bruno, Prague, or Strava. And like you said, if you are IT inclined, you are a, you are a hot cake in yeah, Czech hot, Republic. You're looking, you are a hot cake. Actually, looking for them. I, so, IT, IT, accounting, fintech. Trust me, this place is for you. A lot of them, every day you go through job um, sites, they are always looking for these guys from Angular to front-end developers, full stack, 
just name it. Then customer care representative, which is another popular job, and a lot of them. So if you're IT inclined, Czech Republic is for you. And from here, you'll go places. So if you get a job, like you said, if you get a job, your employer is liable to pay your health insurance for you. It's a law. It yeah. pays your health insurance for you, which covers that's, the cost of that. That's if you are on a full-time job. Full-time, yeah, full-time contract. Yeah. About, yeah, once you're in full-time, yeah, they are, they are supposed to do that. Yeah, because I, I um, personally, I know a student who's working full-time currently, 40 hours. Um, his employer is paying his health insurance. He paid his health insurance before he relocated to Czech Republic, right? And it would be refunded because the employer now has to pay the cost of the insurance for yeah, him. Exactly. So if you get a job as a student in Czech Republic, the advantage you are saying now is you can change your visa type from student to employee card mm -hmm. and you get and then, health benefit from your employer. Yeah, and then uh, when you are done with studies, let's assume that I, I graduated this year, okay. right? Well, I'm going to graduate summer this year. And if I graduate summer this year, my visa is going to expire at the same time. So if your visa expires, that simply means that you can actually apply for the purpose of seeking okay, for employment. Ask a question. You get yeah, me? go ahead. I will ask a question. So Someone's then, asking a question, but I'll say I will tell you later. Okay, so you can just apply for. So it's not like the UK. When you go to the UK, what they do there is if you have like a visa for a long period of okay let's say for instance you went for a two years visa for studies yeah. and when you are done they give you like maybe one year or two year for visa stuff you understand? it's it's not like that here so once you're done studying you can extend your visa probably for the purpose of seeking employment yeah and if you get the employment all you need to do is just keep renewing it based on employment okay so to Answer the question. We have a question that says, um, what's it like in a job? What about getting job and what is the pay? What is the pay in Czech Republic for full-time jobs or student jobs, part-time jobs, yeah? Well, the pay, the pay also depends on the job, but an average pay in Czech Republic is like, um, on an average, 35,000 Czech crowns per month. That's 5,000 check rounds per month. Per month. That's the average oh. pay on average. So, but if you are into IT, you can end up to 50 to 70,000 check rounds per month. Okay. And then um, it depends also on your, your number of ex age, I mean, like years of experience, like a full stack who has up to 10 years experience can end up to 100,000 check rounds to 150,000 check rounds per month. So the question is relative. It depends on one area of expertise to years of experience yeah that will determine what we pay but on average at five thousand check rounds per month okay how about for students like what is the hourly pay the minimum wage as a student you're working a part-time job what is the minimum wage as a student permanent job minimum wage i think the mid let me just start with the minimum wage the minimum wage is 120 120 crowns per hour Minimum 120 crowns per hour. That's six euro. Six euros per hour. Yeah, that's that's the mini. That's yeah, that's it. But you can get up to 300 crowns per hour. So if you're if you're working as a student on 120 or 150, let's say 120 check crowns per hour, and you know if you can work just 20 hours and you are not able to get full time job, so you're working 20 hours. Can you pay for your cost of living with that job? Can you sustain yourself in Czech Republic with that amount? 120, I, I doubt if you can. I once did a job when I came, like a quick job, and that was, um, that was sometime in um, July last year. Yeah. And I was being paid 160 crowns per hour. It's it's a warehouse job, you know, and um, with 160 crowns, you should be able to take care of yourself if you can work up to 20 hours per week. So with 160 check crowns, you can pay your accommodation fee. You can yes, that's you can if you're the cost of living. 
Yeah, if you're paying 20, if, if, if you're working like 20 hours per week, all right? Yeah, but with 120, I doubt. But you rarely get a job that pays you 120 crowns. On average, most of the jobs you get will pay you between 150, 170 crowns per hour. Um, the friend I told you about who just got a job is being paid 250 crowns per hour. Paid 250 check crowns per hour. Yep. And it's even a teaching okay. job. It's a teaching job. Mm -hmm. And it's full time. Uh, I don't know if it's full time, but I, I think it's part time because he said he was going to be working for like um, Monday to Thursday. That was his agreement with them. So it's not okay. like. So, and then each day is about six hours per day. Yeah. Yeah, six hours per day, like almost 24 hours a week. Okay, so um, can, that means that it will be difficult to pay your tuition fee if you've not already paid that from outside the Czech Republic. If you're coming from Nigeria, for instance. Yeah, if you're coming from Nigeria, my advice is this. If you're coming from Nigeria, try as much as you can. Pay every debt you have starting with your accommodation for one for one month and then if you are coming come with at least accommodation for extra two months one okay. number two um come with your feeding at least for one month then number three ensure you pay your tuition fee and every other thing you need to pay so but just make sure you have what will sustain you for at least two months but i'm sure that within two months you should be able to get something for yourself so with the language barrier, um, someone is saying, how is the possibility of getting PRU and citizenship in Czech Republic? Okay, now PR and citizenship in Czech Republic is a little bit tricky and dicey. Uh, this is what I mean. I just got to realize recently, you know what they say is after you've stayed in Czech Republic for a minimum of five years, you can apply yeah. for PR. Yes. It has to be five. But if you come to Czech Republic as a student, every two years are calculated as one year. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. If you come in as a student, every two years is calculated as one year. So, for instance, you come in as a PhD student and you spend four years. So, the embassy calculates it as what? Two, two years. years. So, you have three extra years before you can apply for PR. That's one. Now, wow. what's PR? and um citizenship you need yeah. to pass the language test language test for integration so if you don't pass the language test to a minimum of b2 then you might not get it so that means if you want to get pr you should also make up your mind that you're going to learn the language learn well. the check language yeah because you have to write the exam so you have to write the exam and pass with a minimum of b level so with b level you get it five years b level that's it Five years, which means if you're a student, that's you have to stay for 10 years for it to count as five years. Uh, is it? Or so? should I say no, that? No, as a student, okay. because as a student, it depends on the number of years you're going to study. For instance, if you're coming to do master's, your two years master's degree is one year. So you have extra four years. You're going to work as, as, as an employee. Then after the four years, you cannot apply. And then you have to pass the language test for integration. So once you pass that, that's it. If you're coming as a PhD student and you do four years, that's two years. So you have extra three then years. You have to work. You work for three years and then that's it. So, but that's so, exactly what I was told, right? Yeah. yeah. The, one, the person who told me has been in Czech Republic for the past 15 years. Okay. And so which means the person ought to be a citizen by now. She's not even a citizen yet. Wow. So how do you go about becoming no, a citizen? She's a permanent. She's a permanent resident, but she's not a citizen yet because okay. she told me that she's unable to pass the exam. Oh, okay. She doesn't have flair for language. So, and she was like, needless to stress herself about the citizenship and all of that. So she's comfortable with the PR and she's actually staying with her family. You know, so she was the one who actually told me this, but you can see that on the immigration website. You won't see it there. Yeah, because a lot of things on the immigration website, like, uh, um i was reading it sometime in the, in the night and i discovered that they tell you you can you have post study of nine months after which 
you get nine months after your study to find a job in Czech Republic. You know, things are not the way it seems. So sometimes I tell people, wait till you come in because the system is different inside the country. So um, they tell you after five years, you can apply for permanent residency. Now you're saying that your two years study is one year. So if you're staying for two years, you will need to get a job. And um, the embassy websites don't state that. It actually don't state all of those things. No, they don't. So I really don't know why there is this um, um, lack of information. I don't know why, but one thing I know is this. Not everything on the website is applicable. Or probably we don't know where it is on the website. Okay. Maybe we don't know where it is. Because I remember, okay, someone was actually trying to bring his family over. And uh, yeah. he came in here last year of August. I think he came in as um, high, high, um, highly qualified um, uh, employer. Employer, employee. Yes. So he has employee rather. So he has like is it the blue card or something, the card for residents. Yeah. So he came in with that, and then he supposed he was told that he's supposed to bring his family after. Six months. Six months. Six months. But till this moment, the family, they are not here. Oh, but I was just reading this yesterday, and the embassy website says if you have an employee card, which means if you came to Czech Republic with a job, you can bring your family after six months. But if you are on a long-term visa, like a student, you, have, you can bring your family after 15 months. So you're saying yeah. that. That's not so what I'm saying is that in, in, in practice, it's not really true. Okay. Because, because you can only apply after six months. And when you apply after six months, it might take up to nine months for a long-term resident okay. for them to approve. It might take up to nine months. Then for, for those who come in with a job, it might take up to three months. So it's not that... You apply immediately and then you get it. It doesn't work like that. Okay. Yeah. So you can apply. They can give you that visa in less than three months. But the rest assured, it might take up to three months before they get it. Now, so the process sorry to cut you off. There's, there, there's like an issue because a lot of people want to travel with their family to Czech Republic. But I keep saying, Czech Republic, you can't move with your family immediately. But the, comp the compensation was that after 15 months of stay, you, your family can join you on your long-term visa or your employee card or your, your resident permit um, okay. after so a now, certain period of time. Now, let me, let me even talk about the, um, the long-term visa, right? So if you come in, you have to stay here for at least 15 months, right? Yeah. So definitely after 12 months, you should have renewed, should have renewed your, stay. your stay. So when you renew your stay, you'll be given um, um, the residence permit, right? Yeah. Which is the long-term visa. Exactly. The long -term visa. So if they give you the long-term visa, your family should come with the long-term visa. But there's something you didn't dig down to see. If you dig down, if you read further, you discover that you have to satisfy the condition for bringing your family over. Yeah, sure. And one of the conditions is minimum sustenance. Always. The minimum, <laughs> yeah, the minimum sustenance amount is way... This is the, why I mentioned it is because by the time you get down to... By the time you get down to the amount, it's not about having a bulk money in your account. Yes, to so that's so what, what they want to see is the job you have that is able to cover you... Right, yeah, and they should be able to specify that you are paying you a taxpayer, they should be able to check and see you are paying tax. So it's not just having a huge amount of money, so which means it's tricky. So when you come over, you have to get a job okay. that should be able to cover you and your family. So this person should check, especially for those who are coming with student visa, probably coming to do master's or PhD, right? Yeah, so. So what they are going to check is the amount you're earning. They don't want to see like amounts. They want to see like an, an they want to see amount. inflow. You have you are gainfully employed. You are earning a particular amount. Every no, 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 no. What they want to see is the employment contract. 
an employment employ contract. Yes, that shows this is what you earn every month. Okay. Okay, so that's one. Then if you if you are not working, probably you have you're an employer. That's when you'll be able to show that your inflow and outflow, how much you are making and all of that. So that's when they like to see that. But if you are an employee, your employment contract. Uh, I know there are a lot of criteria to certify to bring your family down to Czech Republic. So if you're watching, you can't bring your family to Czech Republic immediately. You're coming in as a student. There are a lot of conditions you have to set to satisfy. Uh, it's, only possible in the U it's only possible in the UK, Canada. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, um, no, okay. Sure. I think someone is asking if applications are still open. Yes, applications are still open. Some schools um, would close their application in um, 31st of March. That is basically when most of them close. Um, 31st of March, I know a lot of them are going to close no. um, for application. No, no most, most, most people close applications in April. Yeah. What? Most schools, I didn't get close that. most schools close application in April. But closing of application starts 28th of February. And goes down to June. Well, the majority I know that we say it's April 30, and um, there are some department that even closes earlier. And for instance, some department in Bruno is still open, but some will close March 30, and then the entrance exam starts in April. Then some will close in April. So I think for me they have a longer duration because some faculties did not open applications until um, January 12, 10. And even the end of January, for instance, in Charles University, I know some faculties and some departments started late application, like from January, while some have started in December and all of that. So, yes, if you want to apply, check the schools, check your department and check if they are still accepting um, um, applications, which I think they are because we are still in February. So applications are still open for some programs, that is. Um, so. Um, Back to the person who asked for PRE. If you, I also discovered that um, here in Belgium, so they tell you if you stay for five years, you can apply for PRE, which is what they say if you if you come to Europe. But I also discovered it's not the same. But to get citizenship and or to get PRE in Czech Republic, I'm going to tell you other ways. Number one, <laughs> like I always say, marry a Czech person if you are marry to check person automatic not automatically but you get your permanent resident permit and after a certain period of time you apply for citizenship or if you um get married to another another eu citizenship um citizen if someone will is an eu citizen um but lives in the czech republic you can get a pre like that number three i think is partner visa right open up if you're dating someone, if you're long, if you're in a long-term relationship with a Czech person, you can the person you can also file for a partner visa that allows you to stay. But all of but these, that, but, that, but that one will require cohabiting. Yes, like, you, you definitely you have to cohabit. Uh. <laughs> because they have to verify that you are living with this person <laughs> and you are in a serious relationship, long-term relationship with this person. So sometimes I learned also. They do random checks to see if you're really living there or if you just want to use that to get your stay. So, but what I would advise, don't go looking for a uh, marriage or relationship because you want to stay back in Czech Republic. Um, I think getting a job is a good, is a good uh, way to stay back after your studies. And a lot of students are working while they are studying, which to a large extent guarantees them if they continue the job, that they will get to stay back in the Czech Republic. So you get nine months for study, obviously, but when you come in and you start working, you can keep extending your stay as a student. Citizenship is you must owe the PR first and language. And I think my advice is that for me, I think the language is easier to learn online, but when they speak it one on one, you begin to discover how difficult the language is. Uh, if, if you want to learn Czech language, uh, and Czech language is something you learn on site, on ground. Yeah. It's not a, if you, after learning online, when they speak, you, you are lost. The language is, I mean, for if, 
how do I explain it? The language is hard. It's hard, yeah. It's, yeah, it's hard, but, but it's not important. If you stay Czech people, if you stay around Czech people, you should be able to learn the language. Okay. Learning the language, the for me, I think for master students, they have an option of enrolling for Czech language as a foreign language, which I think is a good opportunity to learn. Um, you don't necessarily have to take the exam, because I know some students in Ayadret who are enrolled in the foreign language program. They are taking Czech language, but not as a credit course, which means they are learning, but they don't have to sit for the exam. I, it, I don't think it's, it's just uh, master's. Um, I think it's, it's almost every, every school do that. I have it here. Okay. So my class is starting next week. Every Wednesday, I'm starting with A1. And then it, it, it's free, right? I mean, it helps you to integrate. And then when you're done with A1, you move up to the next class. Yeah. Which is uh, B2. And then from B2, you go to B1 and like that. So it's, 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 it's free, so it shouldn't be hard. But the best thing is being around Czech people and having them as your friends. It's going to help you learn the language really, really fast. I think that leads me to my next question. How, because um, you hear stories of racism, discrimination, and all of that. I don't want to talk from my own point of view. So you've lived there a longer period of time. How are the Czech people in terms of their relationship with foreigners or immigrants? And black people. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, like, I hear people talk about racism and all of that. I've never had that experience. I've never had it. Uh, maybe because I love beer a lot. So, and I make a lot of friends when I go to the bar. Czech people like beer. The male, the female, the young, the old. Everybody likes beer. Yeah. So, if you're a good beer person, I think you should be able to make a lot of friends. And... Um, so I don't have that experience when it comes to racism. I mean, I've got good treatment here in my department. Um, in okay. the faculty, I don't remember anybody trying to make me feel like I don't belong here. Um, but then I go to mall and I go to other places. I know a couple of times I've actually stepped out to play games like basketball, football, and I just mingle among the crowd and I'm welcomed, you know. So I don't know about it, and I don't know how people... I think for people to treat you as a racist, maybe it probably depends on your reaction. You know, sometimes we need to look at what we do. We need to look at ourselves, you know, and stop looking at people, you know. So if you learn to look at yourself, you should be able to know when people... And uh, I, honestly, you know what? I've never had that well, experience. Well, I've also never experienced that, and I never experienced that. When I went to the mall, um, in Aradret, when we went to the mall, because... When I arrived, I was the only black student in the group. So when I got to the mall, they were staring, but it was not in a bad way. It was more in a, I don't know, I got a lot of comments. I got a lot of, I made a friend when I was looking for my bus station. You know, like Czech people for me, when I got there, they were welcoming. They are, they are nice. I didn't experience racism directly or indirectly. But I discovered that when they look at you or when you see them staring at you, you don't have to get defensive. They are not staring at you in a bad kind of way. They're actually looking like in a... I had a couple, they were talking and they were like, looking at my skin and all, oh, because I, not in a bad way, certainly not in a bad way. So for me, I've not experienced any form of racism also. So I, for me, I believe the Czech people are very welcoming because in my department... Uh, you know... You know Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going to cut you here. There's something about Czech people I discovered. Czech people are shy. Yeah. So Now, they would want to talk to you, but they are shy to talk to you. Now, if you don't start up the conversation, they will never start up a conversation. So I notice this in probably in the kitchen when I'm cooking and some other people come to cook, and everybody's just quiet, nobody's talking. But the moment you say, hello, they are quick to respond because they want to engage you. But well, because of that nature they have, they're shy people. They are reserved. And it's, of, and it's because of the fact that they are shy, they don't want to speak English because they are scared of you laughing at them with their poor English. So they just tend to avoid you. So that avoidance doesn't necessarily mean that like, they're racist. Racism or something. No, no, the avoidance is they hate being disgraced. Okay. They, so they just try to avoid you. So if you 
open up and you make them comfortable and they will relax with you. So avoiding you or avoiding conversing with you doesn't necessarily mean that they are racist. Thank it's you. just to just avoid that awkward situation of speaking English and you, because they are not native English speakers and their English is not so sound or Yeah, time. not so good. Yeah, like not so good. In my department, I think all my faculty members speak English. Some don't speak fluently, but some speak really fluently. So um, we went out for lunch and the conversation was weird because like three people were speaking Czech language and I was just there looking because um, the conversation was held in Czech. And then when I discovered that it was not really to exclude me, but because the English between them was not really so sound. So I think sometimes we just have to make an effort and stop looking for racism. I don't know if that makes sense. Because people are always quick to say, oh, this person is racist yeah. to me and all of that. So like, stop looking for it. Like sometimes I enter the bus, I don't care who black, white, yellow, I just sit beside you. Like, I really don't care. I don't look at your face because that's when you begin to say, oh, he acted somehow. So maybe he's a racist. Like, I don't know. So I just wanted to ask because you've been there for like about more than a year. So if you've experienced any form of academic discrimination or any nope. racist um, um, nope. attitude from locals. Honestly, honestly, like I said, if you want to know a real check, meet them in the bar and you can see how welcoming okay. they could be in the bar. Oh man, you will love it. They are nice people. I think they are. They are, nice and people. their food is nice too. Because no, they're not their food. Their snacks. Because <laughs> one thing I enjoyed was the Czech snacks. I think I enjoyed better than better than here. Like Czech snacks is really nice and sweet. They like a lot of sweets, chocolates, sweet things, and all of that. Um, I think for me, they are welcoming, despite the fact that they don't speak English, because. I was at the train station when I was coming to Padubisa and literally, I mean, I bought my ticket, but I did not remember to take the ticket, right? The woman at the counter, I, I, I made the wrong turn. She came down looking for me. I didn't even know she was looking for me for more than 15, like 10, 15 minutes. And she was running after me and, you know, she was speaking Czech, but I didn't understand. And she ran after me to give me my ticket. And... Then I ask for my way and people literally walk with you, take you to where you're going to and go back. Like, for me, it's like they are welcoming because all the situation I always like ask. So I go close to them, hello. And sometimes I just say, don't breathe in. <laughs> don't breathe in. And then I ask them that, um, where I'm going to, just a little, I could speak and then try to express myself. And then they tell you. And when they don't know, they tell you. That, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't help you. I don't know. Yeah, they are very honest and yeah, straightforward. they are very honest, very honest. Um, so I want to ask you what your relationship with your faculty member and other students are in the in your mm. university. Um, my relationship with um, uh, yeah, it's 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 a little bit awkward because um, how do I explain it? Okay, fine. Let me put it like this. In my, in my department, it's like an institute. An institute is made up of two departments, Department of Chemical Engineering and Department of Environmental Engineering. Um, unfortunately, I am the only student in the Department of Chemical Engineering. Wow, that's cool. Now, majority of them are in the Department of Environmental. So on my floor, we are just four people. Okay. Myself, my supervisor, his secretary, and one other lecturer. So you discover that I can only go to ask questions. I don't have people to interact with, you know, unlike other people in other departments who have people to interact with. And it's really beautiful with people in your bench or people in your in your lab and all of that. So but that for me I don't enjoy that here. And because most of the things they do in environmental, which is a sister department, doesn't really pertain to me. So I really don't have much interest with them. Cross. So that makes it, I mean, a bit difficult for me to go having conversation with them. I you know here people mind their businesses. On a lot. You know, where we come from in Nigeria, I can leave my department and go to another department. Yeah. And we are cracking jokes and gisting. 
But right here, everybody's focused. You know, the only time you get to see people and talk to them is probably during our lunch time between 12 and 1. You know, we just, you can just meet people. But in our kitchen, I'm the only guy using the kitchen. If my supervisor is not in the kitchen and the secretary is not in the kitchen, the kitchen is virtually empty. And you don't expect me to go downstairs to meet other people and begin to have, what kind of conversation am I going to have with them? So it's really not like that. But for other people who have people like in their... Like research, in master's program, program where you are with other students? Uh, we don't even have master's program. I mean like master's students for In English, your faculty? For English. Oh, nice. So we have them in Czech language, so I'm not interfacing with them. The only English, um, um, the only English master's program we have in my faculty as a whole, just two. One is um, material chemistry, and then the other one is, um, I think, is uh, engineering of energetic materials. So just two okay. master's programs in English, and none of them are under my department. So you see why I don't read it. I don't interface with master's degree students here. Okay, so, but so other people are enjoying it. So that means you're saying practically that um, you are the only one in your department. Master students, Apparently. their program is in Czech language, so it's been hard to yes. converse with them and As make well. make friends. Um, even though, even though some of them used to come to my lab to use some of my equipment to do certain things, but I can't even interact with them. Because some of them, their English is not as good as mine. A native speaker. You know? And then some of them are just shy. It's just like, Angliski, when you want to talk, they, you just hear. Yeah, they don't me Angliski. That they don't understand English. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think that for master's students, or for students living in Prague and Bruno, it's, I just believe if you're in a master's program, it will be easy. Um, because you see maybe classmates you can ask questions still talk to but making friends is not that easy in czech republic making friends or generally in europe i think so if you are an introvert i think you become more of an introvert and you might enjoy it but if you're an extrovert and the kind of person that likes to talk to other people be all bubbly i don't think that it will be easy in the first couple of months unless maybe you start going out more joining groups and doing other fun activity but um for someone like me like when they when they invited us to go bowling i, I discovered that every night they always have an activity and sometimes it can be really draining to want to go out every night and um you discover that you are friends you think you are friends with them one minute but the next minute nobody's coming to check in on you nobody's looking yeah. for you nobody's like yeah. it's just whenever you guys hang out you hang out and yeah, 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 yeah I, 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 I noticed the same thing. Their friendship is actually for group gathering. Yeah. All right. So when we gather, we talk, we have classes, we meet. But outside that, everybody goes private. I remember going to visit someone, and um, and I came and I was like, "Hi, dude, are you in the, are you in your room?" He was like, "Yes." I was like, "I'm in the kitchen, all the way from my own dormitory to his dormitory." You'll be shocked, he told me I am busy. I mean, like, I left my dormitory and I came to his dormitory. So, if you have to see someone, you have to make you an to appointment. <laughs> All an information. It has to be like an appointment. Thank you. That's it. So, you have to tell them, I'm seeing you at social time. If you don't do that, you just show up. I'm sorry, nobody's going. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to try and um, recap briefly for those who just joined. If you are coming to study in Czech Republic, or if you are traveling to Europe, have it at the back of your mind. English is not their official language. English is not their first language. So you have to be patient. You have to be um, accommodating also. And you have to like be willing to also um, compromise in some certain situation. And two, um, if you're coming, always come with money for like, two to three months, even two to four months of leaving um, to take care of yourself. Yeah, case, because you never can tell. Yeah, you never can yourself. tell, especially if you are going to the smaller cities. It might be faster to get your visa. It might be low tuition, but you never can tell because the um, um, getting a job might not be that easy. Um, 
Third, you have to consider learning the language if you want to become a resident yeah. or if you want to get citizenship. You have to consider learning the language. And um, I think that will be all for now. Getting jobs, I'm just going to add this. Getting jobs in Czech Republic, you can look for Facebook groups. I I know of a couple of them on Facebook that advertise jobs for foreigners. Um, most of them require second language. Sometimes it might not be Czech language. It might be French or German or Dutch or Italian or Spanish and all of that. So you can check Facebook group, register with um, Indeed, Glassdoor, and the like. major of them register there. Yeah, jobs, jobs, to easy. jobs in CZ. I think jobs in .cz or jobs in CZ. And generally use the Google, find jobs around me also helps. When you Google jobs near me or restaurant near me or um, customer care representative jobs, all of those helps for you to find the jobs. And I would advise that learning a second language like German or French also helps um, because some of these companies like IKEA, um, I know a couple of them that I saw their advert, they don't require Czech language per se, but if you have knowledge of the second language, it would help you greatly. And if you're looking forward yeah. to doing part-time job, have it at the back of your mind that if you don't speak Czech, a lot of them might not employ you, not because they are racist, but be, um, in the smaller cities, English is not really prominent. So their major um, um, communication is in Czech language. So I think, is there any other thing you want to add for those coming to Czech Republic um, as students? Well, I, I don't have any other thing to say, but I just want them to know that, like you said, um, Czech Republic uh, is not an English-speaking country, so open your mind. If you love to learn languages really fast, you're going to enjoy the place because the moment you can speak Czech, they embrace you like one of their own. Life becomes quite easy for you. So while coming, I would advise you to, um, yeah, I mean, like if you have three to five million naira, um, <laughs> you should be able to bring it. Yeah, you should be able to bring it to Czech Republic. But out of the three point three to five million, you should be able to have like an extra one million and then keep it for one to two months. You know, because I wouldn't say there's job. I wouldn't say there's no job. Yeah, there is job, but that depends on if this job fits you. Right, mm -hmm. so you can't have a background in philosophy, and I'm telling you the answer. Oh my God, you just had to say and philosophy. Time, no, 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 no. I, I just, so I'm just, I'm just trying to make the point. I, I can't tell you. You can't tell me. You can't have a background in IT. Yeah. And I'll tell you there are no jobs. You understand? So it, there are jobs, but that's relative to where you find yourself. Yourself, yes. There are no yes. jobs. It's relative to where you find yourself as well. You know, so. You can have your IT skill and you are somewhere where there are no jobs. So you see your skills are irrelevant. You know, so before you come, there's need for you to make your research. You need to check one, what are you good at? What skills can you sell? That's one. Two, you need to look at where exactly does the skill apply. You apply. You understand? So okay. when you look at these factors, then you also check how much do I have and which city is cheaper for me. So you need to consider these factors before choosing a school. So when you look at these factors, you can say, okay, fine. I have this skill. I have this amount of resources. And then yeah. I think Prague is fine for me. I think Bruno is fine for me. Then within that location, be able to say, okay, what are the schools in this environment? Then you cannot pick the school and then apply and then you come. So at the moment you come there, you don't need to struggle. So you can have IT skills or whatever skills you have and you're going straight to, let's say, for instance, Paris. Our address. <laughs> you know, so when you go there, you can't have you're going and go to Aradret. Like, Aradret is a very small city. Um, it is good if you're a PhD student who can work independently. Like, um, you don't have to go to school all the time. So you can go stay somewhere else and then come when you're, you have a meeting with your supervisor or your promoter, as they call them here. But if you're a master student and you have certain high quality skills like data analyst, business analyst, IT skills, web developer, and the rest of that. I think Bruno Prague is suited. Yeah, I would thank you. Then at the same time, we should also have it at the back of our mind that remote jobs here are also, um, they are common. Yeah, so, yeah. So 
So you can also get jobs you can do remotely without going to the office. And they are housekeeping jobs. Like they are like, um, how do I say, it? babysitting, housekeeping, um, jobs for expatriates who are in Czech Republic. There are certain people who are foreigners also in Czech Republic, but who need living um, workers. It might not be too perfect if you're a master student and you have a highly structured coursework. But there are jobs. I, I know there are a lot of jobs. It all depends on how you search. Trust me, there are, there are jobs in Czech Republic yeah, yeah, that are paid for. Yeah, I learned yeah. of someone, a Kenyan, who was working in Czech Republic and earning $100 per hour, per day. She was working for an American couple and she goes from Aradre Kralo to Prague every day, four or three times in a week. And she earns, they pay her in dollar. Like, they pay her in dollar. So. <laughs> So there are jobs in the Czech Republic, it just depends on your skills. And um, I think lastly, what I'm just going to say is um, you can always migrate. It doesn't have to be your final destination. You can move from the Czech Republic to any other country. You can do your search, save up money and move. People stay for six months, one year and they leave. People stay for the entire period of their course, finish their program and also leave. Um, it's just a stepping stone because once you get your resident um, card, you can apply for other things, unlike when you have just a visa. Um, so I think don't. it doesn't have to be your last bus stop. It's just a stepping stone yeah. for you to leave your home country, come to Europe, and then find your way to greener pastures. So um, thank you very much, Obina. Um, like you said, getting your PRU, renew your visa to resident card, um, getting a job as a student, uh, bringing your family. We've talked about all of this. We've talked about the availability of jobs, the language barrier, racism and discrimination, which I have never experienced and I pray not to experience it. Um, we, we've covered all of this in this video. So Obina, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on my channel. Thank you for answering the questions. And um, I look forward to seeing you when next, <laughs> when next time in Padovisa. So. Um, right. see you later and thank you guys thank you. for staying tuned thank you for watching if you have any other questions I think you can still drop them um, there are so many cities in Czech Republic Zlin, Ostrava, Umlumog Librek Adred, Padubisa. you have to like do your search properly please before coming down here so you don't say nobody you know so alright guys take care and, see and then you. one more thing they should try as much as they can to connect that's the only way to survive connect with other people so that they can get information quite easily. Yeah, like churches too. Churches help. Um, yeah. Fellowship, churches, groups, um, going out and talking to people, asking questions because here yeah, if you don't ask questions, people don't tell you things. So you have to ask questions um, and open up to people, talk to people also. I think that helps. So if you have any further right. questions, guys, Feel free to drop them in the comment box or send a message and I'll try my best to respond. All right. See you in my next video. Obina, take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye. Yep.